Hello everybody and welcome to another review by the MXQ Project. In today's video, it's going to be a bit of a first for us here, we are going to be reviewing our very first smartphone. So in today's video, I'm looking at the Ukitel Mix 2 smartphone. It's got an octa-core 2.3 gigahertz Helios P25 processor, 6 gig of RAM and 64 gig of internal storage. Now that storage is expandable with a micro SD card and it can take an SD card up to 256 gigabyte in size, I believe. Although some listings have it as a maximum of 512 gigabyte SD card. Not sure which, I don't have one that big to check. Anyway, it's got a 5.99 inch in-cell display with a resolution of 2160 by 1080 p and an aspect ratio of 18 by 9. It's got a 4018 milliamp battery, so you should get plenty of usage out of that if the battery is going to live up to its expectations. It's got a rear fingerprint scanner, dual camera setup with a 16 megapixel Samsung sensor with an additional 0.3 megapixel sensor for depth effects and HDR and things. It's got a front-facing selfie camera with a resolution of 8 megapixels. It's also got a dual SIM card tray along with that micro SD card tray as well and a lot of other cool bells and whistles that we'll look at over the course of the video. So we're going to move straight on now and get this thing unboxed, have a look at the build quality and the design of the thing and then have a look at what else we get included for the price and then we'll go from there and we'll just wing it and hopefully everything will go to plan. So I'll see you again in just a second, we'll unbox it. So this is the packaging for the Yukitel Mix 2. It's uh, very you know, minimalistic in design. It's kind of got a black matte finish right throughout. It's very, very nice, feels very well made and sturdy. And it's kind of got this coppery, bronzy embossed text effect on the front with the logo mixed too. And that's about it for the packaging. Some basic information on the side and on the back, nothing too exciting. So let's get this thing open. I'm very excited about this. So first thing we come to is the phone itself. If we just take off this protective sleeve, we can see it's got a screen protector on, so I'm going to peel that off. It's always very satisfying to do. Some people like to leave those on, but I like to take them off. It's a lot neater. Now, first thing I've noticed is it comes with the case already installed, or the phone comes in the case already. It's kind of one of those rubbery plastic protective cases, which is really good to see the phone come with, actually. Now, I usually swear by these things because it offers a bit of protection if you were to drop it and maybe damage the screen it's kind of got a little lip here so if you were to drop your phone from a short distance this should give it some decent protection i use one of these on my iphone 5s that i've been using for about 18 months now because i'm quite accident prone when it comes to mobiles now another thing i've noticed that it's very very heavy that's probably due to that huge 4080 milliamp battery that's built in there as well that's non-removable and because of its huge 5.99 inch screen size has a resolution of 2160 by 1080p and an aspect ratio of 18 by 9 according to the spec sheet which is very very big indeed and probably why they've taken to calling these devices phablets um, if you're familiar with some of the Chinese retailers, they kind of market them as 4G phablets rather than a phone or a tablet. But yeah, it's very big, very heavy, but it feels very, very sturdy and it's very, very comfortable to hold. So let's have a look at the device itself. On the bottom of the front here, you can see that selfie camera, that front facing camera, which is uh, 8 megapixels in resolution. So more than adequate and definitely better than my iPhone 5S, which I think has a 1 megapixel front facing camera and the quality does leave a lot to be desired. So 8 megapixels is more than adequate for taking those Snapchat selfies uh, and all the rest of it. So if we turn the phone over here, we can see we've got a dual camera setup on the back. Hopefully that's in focus. One of these cameras is a 16 megapixel Samsung sensor and there's also a smaller, less powerful 0.3 megapixel sensor as well and that's used to kind of add some depth effects to your photos but it's nice to see a dual camera set up on such a budget phone. This ring here is your fingerprint sensor which I'll show you a bit later on. On the side here we have the SD card and SIM card tray. Now it's got a dual SIM card tray on there so you can have two nano SIM cards in there. You can also fit an SD card or a micro SD card rather. Up to, I think the Gearbest listing has it at up to 512 gigabytes. But some reviews and some listings say that it can take up to 256 gigabytes micro SD cards. Now I don't have any SD cards that large. Um, so I'm just going to have to take the word of the spec sheet here. 
it's got the volume controls on the side here and a power button as well pretty standard stuff now i'm excited to turn this on but let's have a look in the rest of the box first and see what we get in there so we set this down for just a moment we have some more needless packaging we have two compartments here the first compartment is your mains charger they sent me an eu one as per usual with these things but i have an adapter for this i also have plenty of usb to mains adapters pretty standard stuff looks pretty smart and well built second compartment here we have the charge cable which is a micro sd uh, micro usb rather cable um you'd expect something like a usb c in 2018 but you know that's fine standard cable as well again feels well made doesn't feel cheap or flimsy what else do we have in here we have a small warranty card uh, warranty card here from Mukitel. and oh dropped something apologies that will come uh, we have the uh, instruction manual and it seems very detailed compared to some of the Chinese manuals but usually these tend to be pretty useless and um, speaking from experience with TV boxes and things and last but not least, which I just dropped, if I can get it out. If you've owned an iPhone, this will be very, very familiar. This is a kind of little needle uh, pin to open your SIM card and micro SD tray. Now, they've gone the kind of the Apple route with this because these are the kind of things that you find with an iPhone. You kind of pop it in a little hole on the side here push that in and it will eject it most android phones i've seen go for a sort of self-ejecting mechanism where you push it and it'll pop out they've gone down the apple route which is fine with this um i suppose it means that it's less likely to pop out and you're going to lose your cards or anything but if you're anything like me you're going to need to keep this quite safe because i've lost a lot of these in uh you know in the, over the past few years and i've ended up having to use paper clips and drawing pins and things but yeah that's what they've gone for with this so overall comes with the standard kind of stuff you'd expect with a phone one thing that i have found is missing is it doesn't come with a pair of earphones a lot of phones nowadays come with their own earphones this doesn't unfortunately so i'm going to have to find some to test that out but overall i'm impressed so far with the build quality of the phone it's very very sleek looking they've gone for a very similar design to say the xiaomi um me mix 2 the xiaomi mix 2 and there's a couple of other Chinese models, oh it's already on, um, that have gone with this design that have called themselves the Mix 2. So some people might call that a knockoff. I'm sure I'm going to get a few comments from people saying, oh it's a knockoff, it's a knockoff of the, the Xiaomi or whatever brand that also is called the Mix 2. It seems like it's a generic brand and design that these Chinese manufacturers use. So it is not a knockoff, it is just another variation of that. But now we're going to power this thing on and we're going to test it and run through a lot of the features and see how well it performs. So I've powered on the Mix 2 and one of the first things that I've noticed and has caught my eye is that display. The display is extremely crisp, it's clear and it's very very bright. The viewing angles are also excellent as well, hopefully that's picking up on camera. You've got very decent viewing angles on this display. It's definitely making use of its size, it's a huge 5.99 inch screen. I think they refer to these phone as phablets on the Chinese sites. Um, but it definitely makes use of all that screen space and the resolution is crystal clear It's 2160 by 1080p and it looks absolutely phenomenal The white balance on the other hand though is slightly cool It has a kind of bluish tint towards it But we can compensate for that in a feature that I'll show you in a little while But overall the screen is absolutely excellent so far now in terms of the user interface Ukitel have obviously opted for a stock Android kind of feel. Now I know some Chinese manufacturers like the likes of Xiaomi have their own user interfaces they like to slap on there such as the MIUI and they have their own launches and things but Ukitel have obviously opted for a standard Android fanfare. Sorry, randomly opening apps by mistake there. So they've stuck with a standard Android style stock launcher, which is great. So if you're familiar with Android phones, this is going to look very familiar to you. You can swipe through the home screens and customize them with widgets and things. We've got an app drawer with all your apps in there, for example. And it comes with all the standard Google applications as well, such as Google Play services and the Google Play store, because I know some Chinese phones have these locked out and use their own, which is really, really good. We've got the swipe down status bars as well and you know switch between apps easy enough got the pull down menus all your kind of 
options on there for your data connection. We've got screen recorder built into this as well, which works really well. It records at 720p. We've got a mode called eye protection. Now this harks back to me talking about that white balance. If we enable eye protection, not sure how well it's going to show up, but it kind of gives the display a less harsh kind of look. It kind of softens up and warms up that white balance. So it's more of a kind of yellowy tint now and the brightness is dimmed slightly. So it's slightly easier if you've got sensitive eyes. But I have quite sensitive eyes actually, but I'm quite happy with not having this switched on. But we have all the other standard options like a torch, etc. We can set it to do not disturb mode. It says a battery status. I need to give this a charge, but I, I'm letting it run down to see how long this is going to last with use. And um, we've got the Bluetooth options, aeroplane mode, and location services as well. But if we just head into the settings quickly, we get the standard settings here. So we've got the SIM card settings because obviously it's a dual SIM setup. I've only got the one in at the moment, but you can set up both of them in here. If we just back out of there. Standard Wi Fi and Bluetooth and connectivity stuff. Display settings. Not going to go into too much detail with this. And we have security settings. Now, here we have the fingerprint settings as well because this has that built in fingerprint scanner on the back and you can register as many fingerprints as you like with this so you could literally get it to register every fingerprint on your hands or someone else's hands if you want to give them access as well so you can set all that up in here i've got two set up at the moment but you need a security code as well so you can set up all those and you can also set it to do different things so if you were to long press on the fingerprint scanner it would take us to the home menu and you know, take you to the recent list of apps. You can even set it to take a photo or answer phone calls. So some great functionality there for the fingerprint scanner. Standard Google settings. Here we have the gesture settings because you can use gestures on the mix, uh, gestures, gestures rather on the mix too, such as things like swiping with three fingers upwards to take a screenshot or to turn the phone on silent. You can also do things like flip the phone upside down to turn it on silent or onto uh, do not disturb mode. I don't use those so much but there they're all there for you to play around with as well. So if we go into about four now, just to have a look at some details, we can see the model number is the Mix 2. Hopefully that's shown up on camera. We've got 64 gigabytes of storage, six gigabytes of RAM, which is awesome. Some may say overkill, but I think it's better to have too much RAM than too little. Uh, the screen size, 5.99 inches, already stated. 21 by 60, uh, 2160 by 1080 resolution in cell display. And it's got the camera information here as well, which you need to be a bit dubious about because it's claiming that the main camera is 21 megapixels. It's not, I think it's 16 megapixels and it has an additional 0.3 megapixel camera on there for depth effects. So you've got a dual camera setup on the back. Now the reason they're claiming it, it's 21 megapixels, it has a feature which will take a photo, but it will make it look kind of like it's been taken with a higher resolution camera. I'm not 100% on how that works, but basically it can mimic the, the resolution of a higher, uh, of a better camera basically. And on the sub camera, the front selfie camera as well, they're claiming it's 13 megapixels. Again, it isn't, it's eight megapixels, which I think is more than adequate for selfies and things. It's, it's, it's a lot better than my iPhone 5S, for example, which is a one megapixel front facing camera. But again, it has that feature where it can kind of enhance the resolution to give the look of a photo that's been taken with a better camera. And we'll get into the camera stuff a little bit later on. I don't want to drone on too much about it. We also have Android 7 on here as well as standard and it'll give us the latest build number and what security patch we're on, uh, etc. Now if you wanted to update your phone, if there are any updates coming through, we have a separate app for that, as is the norm for a lot of Chinese devices, especially TV boxes. If you've watched our reviews before, they all seem to come with this app and what this will do is it'll allow you to check for updates that come over the air. Now we've already had a security patch through since we've... Uh, received the phone which I think was released in January or February of this year so it's great to know that they're putting out security updates for this device and it kind of gives you peace of mind knowing that the manufacturer is actually supporting this device which isn't the case with a lot of Chinese tech so I'm very very impressed with that but we're running the latest security patch there's no other updates so that's kind of the basics of the phone I'd like to talk a little bit about the fingerprint scanner as well so I've already set this up so I'll try and take a look at the speed so if I just turn the display off here when you've got a fingerprint scanner set up, you can simply tap the back and it will enable, uh, it will turn on the screen again, basically. So if we just tap that and the screen's come back on, just to show you that it works. Now let's have a look at the speed of this. You're not gonna be able to see this because my finger's behind it. But as soon as I tap this, it's pretty instant. And there we go. 
So the fingerprint scanner works really well. It's nice and sensitive, but it's not too sensitive that you're accidentally turning the display on when you don't mean to, if you've got your hands in your pockets or whatever. But um, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty decent feature, and it works a lot better than, say, the Touch ID on my iPhone. So I'm already preferring this phone in that respect. But next up, we're going to take a look at some of the other features. We'll probably have a look at the benchmark scores from Antutu and Geekbench, and have a look at the gaming and things like that. So stay tuned, guys. So I've opened up the Geekbench app now just to show you the benchmark results. I've done the CPU and the compute benchmarks. I've not done the battery one yet because it takes a few hours to do properly, but I may follow up on that. Um, but when we open it up, it gives us our uh, device information. So we've got the model OS CPU and all that. So you can see the CPU there. We know it as the Helios P25, which is an octa-core. Uh, no, it is an octa-core. I was going to say hexa-core. It's not. It's an octa-core processor. So it's got eight cores and it's clocked at around 2.3 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive for a $200 phone. But let's take a look at those results. So if we've got the history here, I've already done these. And the CPU results. So we can see here the Geekbench score on the single core is 920. The multi-core is nine, uh, 3954. Sorry, I'm finding it difficult to speak today. 3954. So if we go in here and compare it on the single core, 920. So it's about half of the Samsung Galaxy S7 on the single core. You know, and it's kind of creeping up on the Note 7 and things like that. Well, hopefully this won't blow up like the Note ones do. If we're going to the multi-core here, 3,954. Now, bear in mind that each time you test these, it's going to give a slightly different score. And this is what it's kind of averaged at. So we've got 3,954 on the multi-core score on Geekbench. So that's a pretty decent score for a $200 phone, especially when it's creeping up on the likes of the OnePlus 3. Got a notification there. So 3,954. It's actually scored better than the S6 Edge, and that was a flagship high-end phone back when that came out. So it's giving you a decent idea of the performance of this thing. It is competing with those higher-end flagship phones from the likes of Samsung, for example, and HTC and stuff like that. So very, very impressive Geekbench score. So if we go ahead and look at the Antutu score now, because I run the Antutu benchmark as well, if we just boot this up, and it's scored a very acceptable 78,380. Now, I think we can go and compare this. So, we've got all the different scores there. So, on the CPU, it scored 33,378. On the GPU, 18,293. On the UX, it scored 21,399. And the memory scored 5,310, which I'm pretty impressed with. Again, if we go and compare this, it's just going to load up the ranks of the others. So around 78,000, if we take a look at some of the other higher-end devices and compare it to those, for example. So these are the big boys here, scoring over 200,000. So it may look not like much in comparison to these models. But, you know, I'm still pretty pleased with it. I was just at the bottom here compared to these. It seems to have compared them to a random selection of phones here. But, you know, I think it's not done too badly. And even doing things like switching between apps, it's quick, it's fast, it's making use of that decent processor. 2.3 GHz has been clocked at the Helios P25. And it's making use of that RAM as well, so you can switch between apps very, very quickly. So let's kind of put that benchmark to the test now, and we'll test a few games. So I've loaded up Asphalt 8 Airborne now, and this is on the highest visual settings, which is what it defaulted to. And so far in this opening cutscene, it doesn't seem to be struggling too much. And gameplay-wise... Oh, nice one. It, uh, it, it's handling it absolutely fine. There's very much, li um, very little in the way of lag or frame rate drops. There's a couple of stutters, but barely noticeable. And I'm quite happily playing this uh, badly. I've never been very good at racing games, but it, it's running absolutely fine. If you compare it to some of the TV boxes we've reviewed, we, you know, a lot of the time we struggle to get this working. Uh, on highest visual settings anyway, but this phone's having absolutely zero issues getting it to work. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm rubbish at this game, so I apologise for the dodgy footage. But racing games are never my thing. I'm more of a Fallout kind of guy, RPG stuff. Anyway, that's besides the point. So yeah, this is running absolutely fine. You know, I'm playing it fine, if you excuse my uh, being terrible at it. But we'll uh, switch over to another game now, and we're going to play some Grand Theft Auto Vice City and see how well it handles that. I'm going to pump all the visual settings up to the highest they can go and see how we get on with it. 
So I'm playing GTA Vice City now and it's all on full graphic setting. Shadow detail set to the highest. Draw distance to the highest. And it's working absolutely fine. Zero issues whatsoever. Controls really well, it's responsive, it looks great, it performs great. And I could sit and play this for extended periods of time without any issues whatsoever. So this phone's just continuing to impress me, especially when you consider and keep considering that it is just a $200 phone. But you're almost getting, you know, high-end specs, you know, similar to flagship phones from well-known manufacturers that we, uh, you know, buy from in the West for just $200. So I'm really, really impressed with this phone so far. But uh, next up, we're going to have a look at some video playback. We'll have a look at the YouTube app and see how it performs with um, some higher res uh, resolution videos. So I've opened up the YouTube app here and I've just searched for our channel. And shameless plug. And then now we're going to uh, just play a video file here on full resolution. Let's choose this one. I'll make sure the volume's down for this. And good old advertisements. We just skip ahead and load this video up. So we're in full screen right now, 1080p, playback speed's normal. And it looks really great. It looks really vivid and clear. Now you may notice these black bars on the sides here. Now that is because this is an 18 by nine resolution screen and this is a 16 by nine resolution video. So it compensates for that by adding these black bars. But there's a cool little feature on this phone, which um, is enabled by just zooming out like you were zooming out on a photo if you pinch the screen like that it will zoom to fill the screen and this works with pictures and things like that and videos on facebook as well it will cut off the edges but it does get rid of those black bars and you get a full screen video as such and it looks really really good it's performing really really well and um, so yeah simply zoom in and out to fill up the screen and it looks great and if we just, for example, put a test video on as well, something with some better colors, and I'll load one of those up right now. So we just search HD test 1080p. Again, I'm not sure how well this is showing up on camera. But you know, it's looking pretty stunning for me. Color, color reproduction is great. It's very sharp, crisp, clear. You know, there's no stuttering in playback. And it just looks really, really good. And you know, you'd be able to watch movies on your phone and stuff if that's what you like to do with a mobile. Not my thing, but a lot of people do. You know, it's going to look really, really good. And you're going to get a really, really crisp and clear image from this through uh, video playback. And speaking of video playback, I've uh, brought up the DRM information for those of you who uh, are interested in that sort of thing. And if we scroll down, we can see that it is only level three supported. So it's only got level three Google Wide Vine DRM protection, which means you're not gonna be able to do things like view Netflix in full HD, and you're going to be limited to a maximum resolution of 480p if you were using apps like Netflix. So unfortunately, no HD Netflix out of the box on this device. So now might be a good time to verify the root status of this phone. I've downloaded a basic root checker app from the Google Play Store. And we're going to check if this device comes rooted out the box. So all we do is click verify root. And unfortunately, it's coming back that this device isn't rooted, unfortunately. So if you're wanting to play around with custom firmware and install some custom ROMs or maybe do, you know, some building of your own firmware for this device. Unfortunately, it's not rooted out the box, so you're going to have to go down the road of rooting this device. And I'm not entirely sure how easy that's going to be. I will look into it, though, and I may even do a tutorial if I get around to it, um, showing how to root this device if it is possible. But unfortunately, out of the box, this device does not come rooted. So if you're wanting one that's ready rooted for you to play around with, then just bear in mind that the Mix 2 does not come rooted out of the box. 
one thing I do need to talk about in this review and I cannot forget to is when you're buying this phone you need to check that it's going to be compatible with your network's GSM band which means that you know these phones are programmed to work on certain frequencies and certain GSMs and you need to make sure that it's going to be compatible with your network for example I'm in the UK and I'm on the EE network and I'm getting a full 4G signal I'm not sure how well that's going to show up there you could just make out I'm getting a 4G signal and so that is going to work in the UK with most networks I would have thought so you're going to be able to get a full 4G signal so if you've got a 4G plan and the information will be in the link in the description of what bands that this phone runs on but it is compatible with EE and you're going to get full signal and a full 4G service if you've got a 4G data plan. Now I have done a little bit of research and looked at some other reviews and they have stated that in the USA it may be difficult um, with your network to get anything more than a 2G data signal which in this day and age is quite slow but you know it's better than nothing but just make sure before you buy it you double check that you're going to be able to use it with your data plan otherwise you're not going to get the full benefit of your plan so I'm lucky I've got a 4G data plan and I'm picking up a 4G signal and it's programmed to work with UK networks but if you're in the US or another country you need to do a bit of research on this it's too much detail to go in, in today's video we may do another video again um, kind of showing you how you can tell whether a phone is going to be compatible with your network in your country but just bear in mind have a look at that GSM information in the link in the description if you're considering buying a Chinese phone and make sure it's compatible with the wavelengths that your plan and your network provider uses as well so next up we're going to take a look at the camera so I've opened up the camera app and surprisingly they've gone for a more of an iPhone style of camera so the way you switch between modes is all set out very much like on an iPhone camera and I've used an iPhone for many years so this is familiar to me if you haven't used an iPhone or I've never been interested in or I've never seen one then this is how the camera is kind of set up on them it's emulated that um, it, it's easy enough to use you just swipe between modes as such so the first thing we start off on is the standard automatic photo mode we've got options up here we can enable HDR we have settings to change the image quality um, and things like that you can also turn on face detection location geotagging as well so all pretty standard camera fare but um, you know it looks really nice it focuses very well it's very sharp sometimes though if you want to take a shot really quickly it can be a little bit slow or if you're taking a photo and you want to grab a quick video there's a little bit uh, uh, you know a second or so's wait between switching modes which may be a deal breaker for some people but for casual users like me it's fine so we're on the video mode just here and the video can actually record up to 4k which is impressive I'm not going to test the 4k on this video again I'll do a separate video and I'll upload the raw 4k footage for you guys to have a look at and see if it's worth the time but you can choose between 4k video 1080p video 720p video and 166p I believe so quite low resolution but you've got a few modes there for the video recording and if we go back into photo mode if we click this little arrow on the side we are presented with a load of kind of snapchat style instagram style filters now i've got none enabled at the moment we have inverted whiteboard blackboard you know and the kind of vintage style and monochrome styles of instagram you've seen all these before they've got different names all across the board but you can it gives you an idea of them all it gives you a little preview which is good if we go across one as well we have a mode called face beauty now this is more for our selfies it kind of adds a dreamlike effect to the edges of the photo I'm not sure if that's picking that up as I'm sliding the effect along we may have to turn the camera around to the selfie mode which I'll show you a little bit shortly we've also got a blur mode here as well which makes use of that additional 0.3 megapixel camera if I just bring this vase into uh, into frame for example I'm not sure how well this is going to work we're just focusing on it as such the focus can be a little bit slow as well but we can basically turn the brightness up and down and it kind of adds a false kind of depth of field effect I'm not sure how well that's showing up on camera it doesn't work that well it seems kind of gimmicky it's not a mode I would use but maybe if you've got more time to play around with it you know and I'll take some shots as well with all the different modes and I'll show you them next in a kind of slideshow to give you a better idea of the photo so I've switched to mono mode now which is a simple monochrome black and white mode again probably a bit more of a gimmick there's also a mono filter in the automatic 
uh, camera mode, so not sure why they've felt the need to include an additional black and white mode, but there you go. Pretty self-explanatory. So the next one's panorama mode, and it's kind of a sweet panorama. When you take the photo, you can go either direction. So we can go this way, and you kind of match up this blue line, and it will kind of beep when you've done it. Hard to kind of do when I'm sat here like this, but it kind of aids you to stitch together a panoramic image. I'll just cancel that just now. I've come out of here. And the last mode is called Pro Mode, which is kind of like the phone's manual mode. So you can set things like the ISO and the white balance and things like that. Just like this with these sliders. Set the color and the contrast, etc. So you've got some manual controls on there as well. So now I'm just going to show you a few of the images I've taken with the different modes in kind of slideshow form, just to give you a better idea than in this video of me recording on the screen, just to give you an idea of what the picture quality is like and how the pictures are going to come out. So I think I've rambled on enough, the review's gone on much longer than I expected it to anyway, but hopefully I've covered enough. And you know, if I haven't, you can always let me know in the comment section. But overall, I think this is a fantastic phone, especially for $200. So I hope you liked the video today, guys, and it hasn't been too boring, and I've not done too bad a job. If you liked it, give me a like, and let me know in the comments any suggestions, anything you think I could do to improve, anything like that, leave me a comment in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon as well. I can't stress that enough. We're getting plenty of people subscribed to the channel, but nobody's getting notified of our videos because you need to hit that little bell icon to make sure that YouTube notifies our subscribers of when we upload new videos, which is usually two or three times a week. Um, you know, at least, if not more. So make sure you hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel so you get notified of all our new content. Come over to the website, mxqproject.com, and we're on Twitter, at mxqproject, and all the usual stuff. All the other links will be in the description, blah, blah, blah. I've been Scott. I hope you've enjoyed the review, and I shall see you really, really soon.